He refused to fall, even as hell itself clawed him back down. The heat and agonizing torment that seared flesh and vaporized fur. Above him, the small one's panic was a desperate, echoing cry, mirroring Kong's own impossible struggle. He kicked, leveraging his entire weight, searching for any purchase with that failing right arm. But the ruined shoulder gave way, agony and hot blood spilling as his grip failed completely. As if the fall wasn't enough, the river of fire, the magma itself, rose to claim his burning feet. The pain was blinding, immediate, but it was pure fury, not fear that fueled his defiant roar. A desperate leap, a surge of pure, primal adrenaline. He found a new, precarious hold, higher up. But the very world was ending, the entire chasm collapsing upon itself in a tidal wave of molten rock. The superheated wave crashed violently against his back, instantly setting his thick fur ablaze. He slammed his burning spine against the stone, ignoring the torment, driven only by the primal need to ascend. Death fell from above, a massive boulder barely missing its mark as the cliff face shattered around him. He looked up, dodging the deadly debris. The child was just five meters away, a lifetime away, with a final, guttural roar that tore from his lungs, he lunged, his left hand finally finding the edge of safety. He pulled his broken body over the precipice, collapsing in a heap, every fiber screaming, finally safe, if only for a single, fleeting moment. He was out of the fire, but the mountain's terrible wrath was far from over. Beneath the volcano's roar, another sound emerged. A deep, gut-shaking rumble he recognized with absolute dread. Wincing, he forced his protesting body to stand, carefully placing the small one on his uninjured shoulder. He crested the final ridge, pulling himself onto a plateau that overlooked a vast, ash-choked valley. The valley was deceptively still, a gray graveyard of falling ash and wandering, doomed giants. Then, the horizon moved. A colossal, impossible wall of mud, pulverized rock, and fire, scouring the mountainside clean. Kong's eyes widened in horror. He knew this unstoppable tide. It was faster than any living thing. The armored herd below sensed their doom, but their heavy plating offered no escape, not from this. The lahar hit them like a physical blow, swallowing the titans in an instant, tossing their multi-ton bodies like pebbles. He didn't run from it. He ran alongside it, racing the very edge of the abyss. He dropped to all fours, the familiar knuckle run now a limping, agonizing gait, compromised by his useless right arm. The ground quaked beneath him, nearly spilling him into the flow, but he saw it, a higher ground, a rocky sanctuary ahead. The Titan King was reduced to a speck, a desperate refugee, racing against a wave of total geological annihilation. The flood hurled mountains, a massive, smoking boulder launched directly into his path. He didn't slow, vaulting over the red-hot obstacle without breaking stride. The churning mud was inches away, superheated slurry splashing at his heels, searing him again. The child screamed as the mud burned Kong's back anew, adding to his compounding torment. Kong roared pushing faster, his eyes spotting a natural stone bridge, his only path across the chasm. 
He raced onto the narrow span just as the destructive tide crashed violently against its foundations. The bridge shuddered, the vibration forcing him upright, a desperate, two-legged balancing act above the chaos. The lahar, relentless, threw another piece of the mountain, a direct, crushing hit against the stone arch. The bridge cracked, disintegrating from the center. Ten meters of open air separated him from safety. There was no time for thought, only instinct. He coiled, ignored the pain, and threw himself into the void. He hit the far side with brutal force, a crushing landing, twisting midair to shield the child from the impact. Behind him, the bridge vanished, consumed entirely by the unstoppable, grinding flow. He struggled to his feet, turning to watch the lahar churn furiously below, finally blocked by the ridge he now stood upon. He gasped for air, caked in cooling, caustic mud, but momentarily safe from the river of death. He had escaped the earth, he had outrun the flood, but he could not escape the sky. The first drops sizzled on the rock, turning stone to steam. This was not water. The corrosive rain found his open, bleeding wound, a new, agonizing climax of unimaginable pain. He screamed, a sound of pure, chemical agony, a torment worse than any bite or burn he had ever known. The child screeched, burrowing deep into Kong's fur, seeking any refuge from the burning sky. Kong rose, instinctively shielding his dissolving shoulder, his eyes desperately scanning the dead landscape for any cover. He spotted a dead, charred forest ahead, a meager hope against the acid, but it was the only one. The blackened canopy offered little real protection. The acid rain found him, hissing on his fur, eating at his skin. The forest itself was dying. A massive, acid-weakened trunk cracked and began to fall directly toward him. He didn't dodge. He charged, shattering the falling tree with his good shoulder, refusing to be stopped. Shelter, a shallow cave, but it was already occupied, a Carnotaurus, equally desperate and maddened by the rain, guarded its prize. The predator, its own hide sizzling, challenged the intruder, roaring a warning. Kong was too wounded, too exhausted for this fight. He growled back, trying to simply move around the beast. The beast mistook this exhaustion for weakness. It lunged, charging from its shelter, snapping its jaws. An alpha's fury erupted, born of pure agony. His left hand snapped out, seizing the attacker's head. With all his remaining, failing strength, he slammed the predator face first into the acidic mud. He pinned it, his massive foot on its neck, a definitive, guttural roar ending the challenge before it began. The Carnotaurus struggled, then went still, submitting to the superior power. Kong lifted his foot, allowing the defeated, humiliated creature to flee back into the consuming acid. He stumbled under the stone arch, finally, finally out of the rain, sliding down the rock wall in defeat. He sat, gasping, his entire body smoking slightly as the chemical storm raged outside. He glanced at his shoulder. The wound was horrific, a geography of pain, gray and white, actively corroded by the acid. The small one looked at the terrible injury, then at his king, nuzzling his unmoving, ruined arm. Shelter. For the first time in hours, there was shelter. But the world does not wait for recovery. The acid rain began to subside, but the ground offered no peace, 
beginning to tremble once more with a new, rhythmic malice. His eyes snapped open. The brief, agonizing respite was over. The child tensed, smelling the poisoned air, letting out a low, warning growl. Kong heard it too. The shriek of stressed metal, the heavy, pounding rhythm of machines, unnatural. Through the lingering haze, powerful spotlights cut the gloom. Four massive machines, walking, stalking. Their design was alien, hostile, bristling with weapons. They were not here to rescue. They were hunting. He growled low in his chest, a sound of deep hatred. Whether friend or foe, this was an intrusion, an offense. The lead machine, painted a bloody red, stopped. Its searchlight swiveled, found the cave, and locked onto him. A piercing mechanical whine split the air as a large cannon on its shoulder began to glow, charging with terrifying blue energy. Instinct. He grabbed the child, pulling him close, turning his own broken body into a shield from the wrath of nature to the malice of man. The plasma bolt hit. Not the cave, but the cliff directly beside it. A deafening concussion explosion. The shockwave hurls Kong deeper into the darkness of the cave. The rain is gone, but the war has come. Wounded, exhausted, and hunted, he looks out. Just as the cold, blue light began to charge for a second, killing shot. 